So welcome to the second half of my uh, developing Sci Sakai under Windows subsystem for Linux. So the first thing we're going to do is download and install XAMPP. You can really use anything. I like to do this uh, in Windows um, rather than in uh, Linux because it's just easier to use a full screen interface. You get to use PHP my admin. And so we're going to get this downloaded and then get it installed. Okay, so we're almost done. So now we're going to start the installation process. There you go. I don't really need Tomcat or the mail server or Perl. I'm going to put the Tomcat inside the, the Linux because that's where we're going to run Sakai. And so no need to have a second copy of Tomcat on the Windows side. We're going to have it on the Linux side. So we're going to start this thing up. We're just going to end up with um, MySQL on port 3306. Apache will be running on, uh, on I believe, port 80 in this situation. What port? Yeah, 80. We're not going to be using the Apache here. I mean, you might, but if you want to do PHP development, then you got a Windows environment that's really well set up for PHP. But the key thing is uh, MySQL is on port 3306, and we can kind of quickly take a look to see if we like that by running PHP MyAdmin. And this really, to me, is the benefit of having this on Windows, is I can use PHP MyAdmin. So now continuing along with the README, we are going to follow the instructions. The instructions are for Ubuntu, Windows Subsystem, and on Mac. So we scroll down to the Windows Subsystem. So there's this create soup that we normally would use the root account, but uh, we have to create this super user account that is equivalently powerful to root because the IP address and the in the in the Windows Subsystem for Linux is different than the one inside the um, Windows. And so we're going to do it by IP address, not localhost. So this script wants to be able to create databases and be like root, but we're going to have to tell it to be super, super instead of root, root. So now we're going to go grab the, um, the, the uh, Sakai scripts and clone them right into our home directory here. And so uh, we're going to go in there, and then we're going to su to root. The key thing is, is that like all this uh, apt get is going to work. It's going to have to be done as root. And so we're going to log in as root. And then we're going to run bash Ubuntu sh. This is really just a bunch of apt get calls. And um, so that will take a little bit of time. We're going to speed it up here. If it only went this fast all the time. But uh, there you go. So uh, we're installing a bunch of stuff. Only have to do that once. This is the um, SD, SDK man is the way we kind of manage Java and the Java dependencies inside here. It makes it really easy to upgrade di different Java versions. I want to you can put that get config if you're going to do get pushes. So there's this config.sh which has a bunch of settings in it. Uh, in this case, the settings are pretty much automatic for Windows Subsystem for Linux as long as you followed the patterns I've done so far. The one thing I'm going to change in here is what repo, because I have forked Sakai project and I want to compile my CSEV Sakai, which is my fork copy of Sakai. And the only thing, if you change your passwords or whatever, away you go. So, But this config is, is read at the beginning of each of these next sets of scripts. So we're also going to take the Sakai properties and edit them as well, because in a sec you're going to see we've got to change one string in here based on uh, the current host name. So we're going to create the database, and this is creating the database on XAMPP because it's just talking on port 3306. Um, and you can see it says Sakai 23 there. And now I've got to copy this and get this put into Sakai.properties so that the Sakai, when it starts up, is able to connect to the right database. And so there's this uh, property down here, this base data source. We'll just put that in, kind of do some editing because my pasting in Windows is not as good as I would like it to be. 
So, but we'll get it right here in a second. So that desktop, WCO, whatever, that is, that's the name of the IP address for our X outside. That's Windows. And so you'll see that it's going to um, talk to that in Windows, not through localhost or 127.0.0.1, but that one instead. So now we're going to create a new Apache, and that's copying Sakai properties in, and that's why it was important to do Sakai properties first. So now we're going to check out my copy of Sakai. Sorry, I clicked the wrong thing there for a second. So we're this is my fork of Sakai. That way I can do pull requests, etc. You don't. You can either just leave it and check out SakaiProject.org, the the main one. This checkout takes a little while. We've been writing this code for a long time. It's a lot of lines of code and a lot of variations on a lot of lines of code, a lot of patches, a lot of improvements, and uh, you kind of see that when you check something out of GitHub and it. And it takes a little while. Okay, so we've got that. And um, again, I'm typing the wrong characters here. And so we're going to run qmv.sh and then type it to see how long it's going to take. And it's going to take a long time because the first time it runs, it's got to download a bunch of dependencies from the Maven. Um, so I took a bunch of that out. Um, and I think I sped the rest of it up, and so this this takes a while. You'll see in a, you'll see when we're done here. Um, we'll see how how long this takes. Okay, so we're finishing up, and it took uh, took like eight minutes. It takes about five minutes if it uh, doesn't have to download all that stuff. So now we're going to continue, and we're going to run the start command to to get this thing started up. You know, and watch closely because the first time you do this, you might not have your database connection, right? And then I've got a script to watch the tail. So I stare at this very carefully to make sure that errors don't happen. If they do, hit control C and type bash stop.sh. Um, but it looks like it's working this time. And so, so one of the things that I'm always curious about is like, am I creating the Sakai data tables? Because if I am creating the Sakai data tables, that means that my Java code is now properly connecting. So I go over here and I take a look at PHP my admin. Of course, this is running on Windows because the SQL server is running on Windows. And so we see that, oh, wow, there is a whole bunch of tables that are being created by Sakai. And so I can feel a little better about this. Get this thing start all the way up and see where we got. And you see at the very end, it says like it's a starting protocol handler 8080. So let's just go see if we can run it. And now we're running on Windows, but the port 8080 comes out, and now we can log in, and we have basically our development environment. So to stop this, you hit Control C to stop the tail, and then you say bash stop.sh. And now you've been round and round, and you're done.